Good morning everybody. I'll give it a couple of minutes and then I'll get started. Uh, just give people a chance to turn up. So how is everybody doing? Everybody doing okay? Thought I'd just try something a bit different today. See if anybody's on yet. To be honest, the, uh, the stream doesn't go out live uh, for a couple of seconds. It's about 10 seconds behind um, the actual liveness. So I have to wait normally a few minutes to see everybody. But Jeff uh, Demission is here, uh, Tom's Aviation, Thomas Fan 17 hello everybody. Uh, we'll just give it a couple of minutes, uh, just give people a chance to turn up. Although 49 people watching, that's not too bad, is it, for quite early in the morning? 50 people watching. Hello, hello. I didn't give anybody any warning about this. <laughs> I just, I woke up and decided to do it. It was literally um, as spontaneous as all that. <laughs> Alright, well, I wasn't expecting as many as 50 people, so I might as well get started, and if anyone wants to pop along later on, then that's absolutely fine. So, hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. Um, basically, today I was going to be doing some servicing, right, and it's a miserable day, it's raining outside, um, I don't particularly like doing this job, so I thought, why not just... Uh, you know set a couple of cameras up and uh, just do some of it live so these are actually locos that really genuinely do need a service uh, it's not you know I'm not just doing it for entertainment purposes uh, so it's not really a tutorial of any kind uh, although if you want to pick up some uh, tips if you want to steal some tips or anything like that uh, then that's absolutely fine um, but I'm gonna do about five locos today uh, I don't know how long it's gonna take I'm just looking for a paintbrush um, so yeah, I, I'll hopefully it won't be sort of longer than an hour or anything like that But uh, I'll keep going until I've done five unless it is going on a ridiculously long time uh, But yeah, it's not it's not gonna be a sort of high production value show or anything like that uh, It's literally just gonna be me servicing locos So if you don't find that sort of thing interesting, I won't be offended uh, You don't have to find it interesting obviously But I know that some people do and I thought I'm gonna be sitting here doing this for the next couple of hours So why not? do it on on show and uh, let people see so here we are this is the first one I'm going to be doing this is the mainline Royal Scott and uh, this is uh, quite an infamous locomotive uh, it's not the fantastic most fantastic runner in the world but it's not too bad so let's get cracking with this one then I don't particularly like servicing these mainline Royal Scott locos but they're all right so a couple of screws at the back and uh, these are um, I say infamous because um, this one, this particular model, uh, normally when I service it and get it all back together, it just doesn't work. And I've never found out why, uh, but a lot of the time it just will not work. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a, a finicky one. And this front screw is proving very difficult to get out. It's almost as though I've glued it in. Uh, I know the front screw did fail on this at one point. So I'm wondering if I, I don't know, maybe glued it in, but it is coming out. So we'll have to see how that goes back in. That's going to be interesting. Okay, I just need to make a note of where I'm actually putting these screws so I don't lose them. Uh, but there we go. Okay, let's take this loco out of its body then. Okay, see how everybody's doing. Cole Predi Predo Bot is saying, oh boy. Has the second Bullman competition started yet, says the Ugly Duckman. Uh, no, not yet. Uh, I'm going to be doing... Uh, uh, I think I'll be doing the next Bullman giveaway at around Christmas time. Uh, I'll, be doing, I'll be doing a different giveaway uh, in the summer, over the summer I should say. Uh, I did briefly mention that during the last stream, so I assume most people know what I'm talking about. Okay, let me see if I can tear this base plate off the locomotive then, and it should give us access to the axles, and indeed it has. Now I used to oil these axles, but I don't do that anymore because the oil um, sort of acts as a bit of an insulator, and I've found that it causes bad running. Uh, so I'm just going to clean the axles and I will put some oil on the driving gear because of course that's only plastic. So I'm just going to clean these up. You can just lift them out as easy as this. Hopefully you can actually see what I'm doing here. I can zoom in a touch if you like. Oh, that's a little bit better. There we go. Zoom in a touch. Now you can't, you can't lift the wheel set out unfortunately because it is connected um, with the pistons and things. So you've got to just do it in situ unfortunately. But uh, this one gets, well, all of my locos get serviced every 12 months, so it's not been long since this one's been looked at. So I'm not expecting any of these to be a real filthy mess. Uh, hopefully not anyway. Let's clear out these axles. There we go. And the middle one, the middle one's the most interesting. But I should be able to just turn it round. 
Now I reckon I can see some hairs on this middle axle. Um, let me see if I can get rid of them. If not, we'll leave it. Oh no, I can get rid of them. Just a, can a chance of uh, grabbing them with the tweezers. Let me lift these out. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of hair got onto that middle axle. Yeah, that does happen sometimes. Right, well I'm not going to be accessing this base plate again, so I'm going to give the gear a little bit of oil straight away. And if you want to, you can actually put a little bit of oil on the back axle and uh, just rely on the other two for picking up. Um, I might do that. Yeah, I'll probably do that. There we go. A bit of oil on the gear. Make sure that's all sat in there quite nicely. Looks to be. And uh, let's put that base plate back on. We actually don't need to access the axles again now, unless something goes wrong. Like I say, every time I've serviced this one in the past, it's uh, not worked when I've put it back together, which is uh, pretty annoying. Right, let me pop these screws back in then because these base plates are a little bit loose. I don't want it dropping off. Right. So as I say, all of these locos get fairly regular servicing anyway, so uh, it's possible that I won't need to you know, scale the armature, for example, with the Dremel. Uh, I'll normally just look at it first and decide whether it needs it, but uh, normally they don't. I normally only do it every couple of years. Okay, let's get these brushes out then. Uh, hopefully you can see what I'm actually doing here. I have only got the one camera set up to film me doing the servicing today, so if at any point you can't see properly, I do apologise, but I can't do much about it because I can't obviously edit between a couple of different cameras. Alright, interestingly, that particular brush holder is stuck in place, so I'm going to try and just sort of tease it out of there. I've got a magnet here somewhere. Here it is. I might just be able to lift it up with the magnet, if it is magnetic. Nope. That is strangely quite stuck. So I might just leave that and uh, sort that out in a second. Let me see if I can't just... Oh, and here we go. Yeah, I got it. You've got to be careful because the springs inside there pop out. And uh, yeah, they can give you quite a surprise if you're not expecting it. And I don't want to be crawling around on the floor during a live stream. I certainly don't want to be doing that. Okay, the other one. And once these are out, I should be able to pull off the face of the motor and get to the commutator. Okay, that one came off a bit more easily. This is one of the oldest locos I have actually. Well, no, it's the, sorry, I, I should say it's one of the locos I've had the longest. My first ever review was of this uh, particular model, so it's quite interesting, I suppose. Right, let's take this front piece off and uh, grab the armature and grab the brushes. And as expected, the armature's not looking too bad, as you can see, it is a little bit dirty, but that's not, it's not too bad. Uh, right, I'm just gonna make sure this little white washer is in place. Okay, there are the brushes then, just there, and I'm going to give the brushes a little bit of a clean, just to make sure they're okay. There we go. It's amazing how dirty these brushes actually get, but these aren't too bad, but this loco doesn't get run a lot, as you might know, I don't run it too often in videos, because uh, it's not the most fantastic runner in the world, but I like to keep it maintained clean those brushes up. How's everyone doing? Uh, Gennaro has got to go, so bye-bye. Have a nice morning. Uh, Broadway limited engines are great, says Jeff. I've never had one of those, but uh, yeah, I, I too have heard good things about them. What I'm also going to do, because I'm being, I'm in a thorough mood today, is I'm just going to make sure the ends of these springs are clean as well. And that way I'll know that everything is going to work properly. Because as I say, for some reason, when you put these back together, a lot of the time, they're just totally dead. And I still don't know why it is, because I clean everything very meticulously. Okay, right, let's clean up that uh, commutator then. And I don't think this one's going to need a scale today, because it looks pretty good. And possibly last year it got one, when I did this last year. So let's just scrub this up. As you can see, from a year, there's quite a lot on there. And as I say, this loco probably hasn't run a lot this year. Oh yeah, that's that, look at that, that's shined right up. So I'm not gonna go through the process of uh, scaling this one because it is quite abrasive and we don't wanna ruin the, uh, the surface of it. And I reckon that must have been, look at that, that's gotta have been done last year, hasn't it? That's really quite uh, shined up quite nicely. Right, so I'm gonna keep doing this until the cotton buds come up clean. There we go. I think also the secret with these mainline ones is to be very, very minimal with the amount of oil you put near the motor. So I'll adhere to that today. Okay, so that's the armature clean. Make sure the uh, 
the back and work towards the gear is completely clean as well and uh, let's clean up this uh, the front plate uh, as you can see there's quite a bit of soot on there I'm not sure how that's gotten so sooty but uh, that's why I do this that's why I do this servicing so clean out the brush holes I'm just uh, I'm just going to clean up this whole piece really there we go looking good and I might as well clean it up on the outside There we are, that looks good and clean. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, right, I'll make sure the insides are cleaned and actually if we look inside here, you can see there's a, a gear exposed so I can clean that one up. There is that little white washer inside there, you can see that white thing. Uh, I don't really wanna be disturbing that so I'm gonna be super careful not to. Uh, that's supposed to still be on the armature, as you can see there's one on the front as well. Uh, they just help to uh, space it so that it doesn't catch on the chassis, I assume. Uh, so I'm going to want to not disturb those, but I will put some oil on the gear there. Make sure there's no hair or fluff, and we can put that uh, armature back in. Has that gone in? Yes, it has. All right, very nice. Right, let's start putting this thing back together then. It's quite a quick and easy once you've done it a few times, to be honest. Make sure this has gone in the right way. Yep. Okay, uh, I'm, I'll save the oil until I've sorted all this out. So let's start putting these in. Brushes go in first. This is the fun part. There we go, that's the first brush. Just push it down in there. The second brush. Have any of you guys got these uh, mainline Royal Scots or Patriots? The Patriots have got the same mechanism. And in fact, even the Collet class, a little Great Western 060, has got the same design as this. It's just obviously not a 460. Different chassis, really. Okay. Oh, I can see a bit of fluff on there, on that spring. It must have come off the uh, cotton bud. Oh, and the spring's rolled out. Perfect. Okay. There we go. All right, this is the awkward part. So you've got to push that in. Bear in mind that spring is now under quite a bit of tension. And then you've got to shove the screw in and tighten it up and I want to tighten it up just enough so that the spring doesn't pop out but I'll tighten them both up properly uh, once the other one's in so that it's not under any stress so I put the other brush in didn't I yet yeah, just double check bang that spring in and pop this one on and you'll notice this the uh, oops wrong way you'll notice the screw for this one is shorter and that's because of course if you know how these work they're split chassis models and this only has to reach in on the, uh, what would it be now, the left side of the chassis. The longer screw that I just put in a second ago has got to reach to the back of the chassis. And that's the, uh, that's the reason why. Okay, let's tighten these up then. I always find that if you over tighten them, that seems to cause problems. So just relatively tight, obviously you don't want them working free. Okay, a little bit of oil then. I think the secret is just to use a tiny amount. There you go, tiny amount. And on the back side, <laughs> pardon the expression, you can use a little bit more because that's not where the armature is. Okay, so let's give this a little bit of a test. What I'm going to do is, is that secure like that? No, not really. Uh, I'm going to grab my helping hand. Are you going to show off your no rolling road in this stream? Uh, no, I'll probably just bang it onto the track. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. I could do that. The uh, front bogey has just popped off. I'm not sure how. Mm, that's strange. Never had that before. Right, let me try and put this front bogey back on. There we go. That was quite easy. Right, so I've got the help in hand. So all I'm going to do is, when you're testing these uh, on the bench without the body on, uh, you want to be careful that they don't fall over, obviously, while they're running. So I just bring out the helping hand and uh, hold it in position just so that it can't fall over. Okay, so let me... Uh, oh, this isn't framed very well. Where does it need to be? It needs to be more sort of over here. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. There we go. That's better. Get the body out of the way. Okay, so this is a good opportunity, I think, to oil the valve gear in the linkage. So obviously, I just want a tiny amount on here. I reckon my oiling pen is almost ready to be filled up as well. It's not uh, flowing out of here too well. But it comes after it's been upside down a couple of seconds. Okay. So a little bit of oil. Very little bit. Uh, just put some on the slider. 
Okay, and let's see if we can test this. Now, as you might know, the power supply I use on the bench is only a, a 300 milliamp power supply. So if a loco is running from cold, it's not really got access to an awful lot of current that it might want. Uh, so we'll just see how this goes. Right, so the fun part is to find out exactly where you can attach the uh, crocodile leads to this split chassis. I think I can see a place just underneath here. You probably won't see this too well, but hopefully it'll work. Yeah, this will be fine. And like I say, normally when I service this one and give it some power, it doesn't do anything. So we'll just have to see if I got lucky today or not. Yeah, I saw it move. Let's give it a little bit of help. See what I mean? It ain't going anywhere. But I reckon we can... Uh, mm, I reckon we can get this to move. Uh, let me just uh, coax the gears round a little bit. Hang on, let me just take this out of here. I'm not 100% sure that this isn't shorting. It shouldn't be. There we go. Ooh, ooh, I almost got it. Sometimes it just needs a bit of a push. There we go. Reattach that to the rolling, uh, rolling road, to the helping hand. And I'll just let that warm up for a second, give it a little bit more power. See what I mean? It's weird, isn't it? I mean, they should be running their best after a service, and yet it does that. And it does it every time, and it'll probably do it again once I get it down onto the track. But that sounds pretty happy to me. So we'll see if we can get it to do a crawl. Bang it onto the track, says Mark. <laughs> Excuse my uh, language there. I didn't mean it to sound like that, Mark. Right, let's see if we can get it to do a start. So I've shut it down. See if it'll start itself up again. Yeah, as you can see, it's not willing to start again. So I probably ought to have double checked whether or not that uh, that motor armature was okay. Uh, but like I said, they're always like this. And we'll just see how it is when we get it on the track. So I'm gonna clean up the wheels, give it a little bit more power, get it going nice and fast. Clean up these wheels. And they're not actually too bad, these wheels. And for some reason, the mainline wheels never seem to get too dirty. And they never sound very healthy, do they? I mean, this is, you probably can hear this through my, uh, the mic that's right in front of my face. It, uh, it is a noisy one, but they run okay, you know, they're not bad. Never fantastic runners. Okay. And I think it was this wheel here that was a little bit dirty that I noticed, so I'm gonna give that an extra clean. Right, that looks alright to me. Let's see if we can slow it down again, see if it'll do a good slow speed. Probably not, not normally with these. That isn't too bad actually, although obviously we're not putting it under any load here. Okay, let's stop it and start it again. Yeah, it still doesn't want to start for some reason, so what I think I'll do is I'll try this on the track. And let's see how it behaves down on the line, shall we? Right, so obviously I'm not going to put the body on just yet, because if I want to do some extra tinkering with it, I won't want to do that. Um, I think I will though put the front bogey wheels back on just so that that doesn't get caught. So there we go, that's the front bogey wheels back on. And uh, let me just go and switch cameras. I'll be back in just a sec. And uh, we'll get this onto the actual layout and see how it's going. Righty o. There we go. I did put this, I did set this camera up uh, just so that we can do some track testing. But yeah, it's a good idea actually. I should probably use the rolling road for this sort of thing. But it's just quicker, really, just to bung them on the track and see what happens. So actually, it does start up fine on the track, as I thought it might do. Uh, it's probably got something to do with the fact that it's not upside down anymore. And actually, for a mainline, that seems to be running pretty nice. Let's do another stop and uh, start it again from... Uh... Yeah, that actually is getting itself going quite nicely. So again, it's probably the fact that that other controller, well, it's not even a controller, that other power supply doesn't have much current available to it. So it can't really give it that oomph it needs to get started. All right, well, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is um, stick the body back on. Uh, let's put this sets back onto this camera. And then I will, once I've got the body on, I'll just do another brief track test just to make sure that it is uh, running okay on the track with the body on because obviously the body can squeeze the uh, the motor a little bit <laughs> So just you know when I take a loco off a shelf. I want it to work So 
I need to make sure that they are working. Because obviously if I'm filming and I decide to run it, I don't want to have to take the thing apart and service it <laughs> while I'm, you know, because you know, time is money. I don't want to have to mess around servicing stuff while I'm supposed to be filming. Right, that front screw's gone in a lot more easily. So hopefully I put a bit of glue on that and we've made a bit of a new thread for that screw. That is a nice thought. They've gone in quite nicely, actually. All right, see how everybody's doing. Uh, Mr. Duckman, he removed some of the other videos, but some of them are still up, and I think you would enjoy them. Is, uh, is that Ugly Duckman? Um, yes, he's asking about my first review, isn't he? Uh, it was my first review. Obviously, it's not on there anymore. <laughs> For obvious reasons, uh, but it was the first review I ever actually uploaded. Um, it's not the first review available now. There are the first review. If you look, if you say sort my videos, oldest to newest, uh, the oldest video will not be the Royal Scott. But uh, that was the first one. And uh, if you actually want to see a few clips from it, obviously I, I showed a few clips during a live stream uh, a few weeks ago. Well, months ago, whatever. Uh, so if you really want to see it, then uh, check that out. But it's not a good review. <laughs> it's hardly even a review, to be honest. Right. Okay, yeah, that still works. Obviously, not the best runner. It's not uh, Hornby or Backman standards. But that's okay. So I'll stick that back on the shelf. And now what I'm going to do is I haven't got a camera on this because it, it's not worth filming. But uh, I've got a folder with all of the locos that need servicing in it. So all I've got to do is give a tick onto the Royal Scott page. Uh, I need to put, uh, this is for June by the way, so I'm going to put June 18, uh, June 19 will be the next one. Give it a tick, and the next loco to do is another mainline loco, because uh, they're in alphabetical order on my list. Uh, so this one is the N2 in LNER Green, so let's do that. Uh, first of all, I've got to find it in my booklet, so bear with me. Uh, I, someone will have to let me know here, have I actually showed how to service an N2 before? Not too sure. So the last time I did this one was in June 2017, and I bought it in June 2015. So it's had quite a few services uh, in its life. Cool, okay, let's do the mainline N2 then. And if anybody is wondering, the Hornby N2 is exactly the same. It's the same model for all intents and purposes. Uh, the Hornby did put a better mechanism inside um, it's got a better motor these days, but uh, for all intents and purposes, it is the same model. And of course, I've got a couple of Hornby ones, but today I'm going to be doing the mainline one. So I've got to find it. And when I say mainline, of course, that kind of means Airfix. And it actually says Airfix on the bottom of this one. Okay, here it is. The N2. Quite nice, this one. It's not bad at all. There we go. I'll put it in the middle there. See what anybody's saying. Uh, Mackenzie Blomfield says I'm back. Think you should put some advertisement on what? <laughs> oh, it just disappeared on those socks. <laughs> I've apologised for the socks. You see, I've not been I've been wearing shorts over this past few weeks, really. But uh, it's been so cold and miserable today. Uh, I thought I'd uh, put something longer on. And obviously, you all don't want to see my blooming legs. Okay, I do that with the paintbrush just to get rid of the dust. Right, let's see if I can remember how to get the body off. That's going to be the first thing. Uh, is that in shot? Yeah, pretty much. Right, I think the body screw is behind this wheel, and I'm going to need to remove that, I think. Uh, obviously, you could probably get away without re removing this rear truck, but I think the rear truck's got to come off anyway before I can access the axles and things, so might as well uh, remove it, first of all. Okay, big screw on the back. Oh, that's quite a big one, that. I need a bigger screwdriver. Right, bear with me a sec. Oh, here it is. It was right in front of me. Yeah, this has got a massive over-engineered screw on it. I mean, look at the size of that thing. It's industrial size. It could be on a real loco. Okay. Should be able to lift this out then, unless there's another screw I've not noticed. I think there is, actually. I think one of these two is a body screw. Uh, let's guess at this one. They're all going to come out, so it's not a big deal. I think it was that one. It's pretty long. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there it is. And that's the Airfix motor, and Hornby got rid of that um, with their version. But uh, yeah, that's the Airfix one. Now, I don't normally go into too much with the motor on this. I just sort of make sure the commutator's clean, because uh, it's a pain in the neck to get the brushes out. But uh, okay, let's get this going then. So the first thing I'm going to do is take out the weight. This is a big weight here. This gives the Loco a lot of its weight. 
lift that out. There we go. And as you can see, there's a spring coming out of the weight here, which uh, touches this pickup here. And uh, it's actually through the weight that the power to the motor goes, which is a bit bizarre, isn't it? A lot of people find this design a bit fussy, but I don't mind because it, it always works. So even though it doesn't make a lot of sense, it does seem to work okay. So as you can see, very simple. This is just all plastic. You've got the motor here with the worm drive and there's just one gear between that and the wheel set. And uh, I think I can probably remove the motor, can I? I'm just wondering if it really needs to be removed. I think actually I can just clean the commutator like this and I don't have to remove it. As I say, with these older models, if they're not trying, I will just give them a quick once over because they get, they get done every, you know, every year. So. Let's give this a little clean. Quite dirty though, look at that. Let's see what people are saying about this. Hey Sam, says Jacob Train. Airfix wears its wings. I'm too young to remember a time when Airfix made things that weren't mostly aircraft. Yeah, that's true, and I, I suppose it's that's the case again now, isn't it? It's mostly aircraft. But yeah, back in the 70s, I suppose, 70s and 80s, they did quite a lot of locos. And in fact, the, the Hornby 4F and the Hornby 2P and the Hornby N7, uh, they, all, we all, we, they all came from Airfix originally. Right, I'm just going to find a needle because I'm going to clean out the gaps in this commutator. There we go. And that just makes sure there's no carbon buildup. Now, I reckon these are five pole motors. Yeah, they are. Now, isn't that incredible? A loco from, what, 70s, 80s, probably 80s, has got a five-pole motor. Even some of the Backman locos don't have five poles. I mean, that's crazy. And they do run quite well, but they're noisy, obviously, because I don't know why. Well, they haven't got any proper bearings. It's all plastic. Even the chassis is plastic. Right, I think I've come full circle because the needle's not getting dirty now. So I think that's the motor sorted. I'll be happy with that. Uh, I'll put some oil on that in just a second, but first of all, let's uh, take the wheels out and give these a clean. Now, obviously, there's no valve gear to worry about or anything with this, so I can lift it straight out. Uh, the wheel set, that is. So let me take this base off, and uh, what I'll do is I'll just knock the screws out of there. And using a different paintbrush, this is my oily paintbrush. I don't put this on bodywork, but I do put it on potentially oily bits. And this just makes sure we haven't got any rubbish stuck to this. Although, it actually, it, to be fair, it looks pretty clean. And the reason for that is probably because if I'm going to run an N2, I'll run a Hornby one rather than this one, just because they are a bit nicer. So as you can see, look at this. A little bit dodgy. Look at all those pickups sticking out. <laughs> bit dirty looking. And I can see some bits of fur stuck to it and whatever, so I'll just get that. I do wash this paintbrush from time to time, otherwise it just get completely crusty. Right, let's clean those pickups first of all then. And uh, depending on how bad they are, will depend on what I use to clean them. But for the first little clean, I'll just use the cotton buds. And they're not actually too bad. As you can see, they really are bent outwards. I suppose they don't need to be as bent outwards as that. But I'm not going to mess around with them. Obviously, if they're bent out too much, that means you'll get extra wear on them and they won't last as long because they're pressing harder against the wheels so it'll increase the wear but I don't think it's too bad these are big thick pickups modern pickups tend to be a bit thinner and a bit more fragile but uh, these are fine okay that's looking good again this is not a loco that runs too much so it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that it's uh, relatively clean on the inside right I'm just going to clean out the axle well the bearings as you can see look at these old square bearings. I don't know whether the Hornby ones are still like that, but it's not too bad because it's plastic, of course. So plastic on metal, it's not going to be the metal that wears down. I suppose the plastic could, though. It doesn't seem to have done, and this model has lasted a fair few years. I mean, I've had it for a, a while. I think this was from my first year of getting into model railways. I've had this. Okay, that's clean, and what I'm also going to do is I will clean the actual wheel set. Uh, just make sure that the axles are clean. Obviously, these axles don't do anything. They don't actually pick up, but uh, it's just nice for it to be clean. <laughs> OCD, I suppose. There we go. And, of course, it's this back wheel here that has the, the driving gear on it, which is to be expected. Right, okay, that's looking good and clean to me. So now we've got the fun of putting the wheel set back in and having the pickups stay behind the wheels. So let's start at the back, I think. And I'm making sure I'm getting these in the right way. 
the little nibs on the rods here need to be facing upwards on the model but obviously it's upside down at the moment so they need to be facing down yes it confuses me as well and this one I don't think that's in properly but we'll make sure after after I've got them all in hmm interesting are they in properly don't seem to be sitting down very comfortably Oh, they are. Yep, they are. <laughs> Just didn't look right from where I was sitting. Well, we'll know, won't we? Soon enough, we'll know. Uh, if it doesn't work properly, uh, that will explain it. Right, so before I cover these back up, I'll add a little bit of oil to these axles just to keep them running sweetly. Oh, I think they were touching the, uh, the table. I suppose that's probably why the table was pushing them back out again. And of course, a little bit of oil on that driving gear because we're not going to get access to that once this base plate's back on. Uh, am I doing this right? No, it needs to go in there. And there's little lugs at the back, so you lug those in and then you sit it down. Okay, uh, let me find those screws then. Oh, I put them on the table, didn't I? Uh, where's the other one? Is it stuck to the magnet? Yes, it's stuck to the motor. See, a few years ago that would have foxed me. I wouldn't have known where it had got to. But uh, yeah, first check. If you're missing a screw, check the motor. Uh, normally I would put them out the way, but I forgot today. I suppose it's because I... I'm talking rather than thinking, but I've done these a million times, so it shouldn't be too much of a big job. Right, I'll make sure those are nice and tight. And now we'll give the motor some oil. Obviously not too much. So a little bit at this end. And if we can get a bit of oil in the back here, that would be good. Is that turning freely? Yeah, you can see that that is turning quite freely and the wheel set is turning. So we know we haven't got anything too wrong with that. So let's give it a little bit of oil on the gears. Perfect. And let's find a way then to power this. Uh, how am I going to do this? Oh, I see. Flip it upside down. Uh, I will need the helping hand because those wheels are touching the, the towel. So uh, I think we need to hold that a bit better. No, that'd be all right. I'm just conscious that Clamping it on the coupling is not a great idea, but I'll just have to be careful not to put too much pressure onto it. Okay, so I've lifted this up off the table just so it doesn't touch. And if I just attach power here, make sure the power supply's off. Make sure it works first. Yep. And I'll just give the rods a little bit of oil. I'm going to need to fill this oiling pen up, I think. Right, there we go. Give it some juice then and I'll clean the wheels. And as you can probably hear, if I put my mic near it, <laughs> quite a noisy thing. You get a real sense of power from this. Oh, that's the phone. Can't do anything about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> There's somebody else in the house, so hopefully they'll answer it. And if they keep ringing, I might have to go and get it. If it's for me, I don't know. See what everybody's saying. Well, what if Sam messed up, said Jeff. Well, it does happen. Sometimes I'll make a mistake. Normally I'll be able to fix it, sometimes not. But that's the whole purpose of all this, you know. You get to know these models. And uh, ideally, as time goes by, you make mistakes less often. That's, I still make mistakes. And I sort, of, I sort of service professionally. But you still make mistakes. You just have to hope they're not too dramatic. And you have to do your best not to make mistakes. So you'll have noticed that I was cleaning the insides of the wheels, because of course that's where the pickups make contact. There we go. And just because those pickups were a little bit hairy, let's say, I'm going to take these crocodile clips off and I'll just do a quick test and make sure that all these pickups are actually working. So back to, see we haven't got anything going through those back to, nothing through that one. Nothing through. Oh, I know why. I know why. As I said, the weight, <laughs> the weight is used as uh, to transmit power from one set of pickups uh, through this little thing here. So I can't test it until the weight's back on. Silly me. See, you make mistakes. <laughs> that's, I didn't do that on purpose, but that proves what I was saying. Okay, so that's good and clean. I'm just going to make sure the reciprocating spring on this piece is clean. It sh there's no reason for it not to be should be clean but uh, 
in case oil's got to it, might as well make sure it's clean. Okay, and I'll make sure this little pad here is clean as well. And it, it just sits right down on top of the motor here, as you can see, it's really quite dodgy. But it does the trick, like I say, it's never been a problem. And we'll have to see if that changes today. All right, screw back in. That whole massive weight is just screwed in with one screw again. That's a bit dodgy, isn't it? Okay, there we go. So that's now under tension. That pickup is, uh, well, it's not a pickup. That little piece of copper is uh, touching the top of the motor. Uh, I'm feeling better after my operation, says Map the Dragon. That's good to hear. Uh, really glad to hear that went well for you. Uh, okay, let's uh, prop this back up. Uh, just grab it with the helping hand, stop it falling over. Okay, let's test those pickups then and just make sure everything's working. So turn the power supply up very slightly. And now let's test the back two. Yeah, that's working. That one, that one, and that one, and that one. So they're all working. That's perfect. Okay, well, I think I can afford to tempt fate here then because there's nothing really that can go wrong with this. So I'll put the body on before I track test it and that will save us. A uh, minute or two, won't it? Uh, let me just have one more think. Is there anything else that needs to go back on this before I put the body on? No, I don't think so. Okay. It's quite a nice body design, this. Uh, you just make sure the little lugs at the back go in the right spot, and then you just screw it in. Okay. So let's put this screw back in. That one at the back was very tight. I don't know why I screwed that in so tightly. But I won't do it so tightly this time. Whoops, uh, it's not a magnetic screw. Okay. Okay. Bogey wheel, says Mark. Yeah, I've got to put the bogey wheel on, but you can't do that until the body screws in. Otherwise it, uh, well, otherwise you can't screw the body back on. Okay. Now, if you over tighten this for some reason, uh, it seizes up. So you've got to, have I got that on right? Yeah, I don't think I think so. I really don't like that uh, truck wheel. There's obviously there's no springiness to it at all. Uh, but it, again, it does the trick. It seems to work. So what can you say? Can't complain. Right. Let's uh, give this a little track test then. I'm not 100% pleased about this back bogey, or truck, or whatever you want to call it. But uh, I suppose we'll have to find out. So let's take this onto the track, and uh, let's have a look. And by the way, I know some people aren't going to be able to watch it this time of day. And if you guys enjoy this, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing this tomorrow morning as well. There we go. That's working quite nice. And as you'll notice, even though it's quite an old model, uh, it's got a good slow speed on it. Let's try and demonstrate that. Yeah, as you can see, creeping forwards quite nicely. I'm obviously, she's going to be at her best now because she's only just had a service. But that's not a bad slow creep, is it, to be honest, for a model that's got an entirely plastic chassis with no with no proper bearings on it so can't complain too much at that okay see how you guys are doing then uh, Mark saying another stream tomorrow yay possibly I mean if people think this is boring which I suppose to some it will be then I won't <laughs> but it's more entertaining for me to uh, to do this on a stream it takes a bit longer but it's fine uh, Jeff says, hey guys, I bought a Scale Trains Union Pacific Big Blow turbine and it cost me $729. Good grief. I heard something weird, said Adam. Uh, it's a diecast Mantua sh uh, shifter, says Stream, Stream of the Train Fan. Evan Sheldon Shafter says, gold or platinum? I think they're talking about models here. Shall I just get on with this? Right, so that is the N2 done. Uh, let me just write this down. So that is a tick. Uh, we've done that in June se uh, 17, obviously, uh, 18 even. And I'll do it again in June 19. Uh, this is all the stuff that I've got to do in June. I'm just doing it a bit early because uh, I'm organized. Okay, so the next one is a Backman A4. In fact, I'm going to be doing both of the A4s. Uh, so the first one is Silver Link. So I'll just let me uh, find that page. And it will uh, have a little gander at the A4s by Backman. Again, these are quite fussy models. I don't particularly like sil uh, servicing those, but they're okay. Right, I need to find A. I don't know whether it's under A for A4. I think it's probably seven, A4. Right, so what am I doing? Silver link first. 
Okay, so Silverlink last had one done in May 2017 and I bought this in December 2016. It says here, I've made a note, it says easy, but don't remove the bogies or trucks. Okay, so that just, I think that's just trying to tell me that you don't need to remove the bogies or trucks to get the body off or indeed to get to the axles. So that's good to hear, that'll save me some time. I'll leave myself little notes like that. Right, let me grab the A4 then. Uh, where is she? There she is. Silver link. This one's a beauty. Right. She's looking all right. Just a quick visual inspection. Adam says good job. I think it's loosely based. Are you still on that uh, that turbine thing you're on about? Big blow. <laughs> there we go. I don't know why I'm laughing at that. I bet Mark knows. Right, let's give this a little clean off. This one's not actually too dusty. I mean, they don't normally get too dusty up here because I try to clean as often as I can, but sometimes it does get dusty. All right. Right, so it said I don't need to remove the uh, the bogey or truck, so I'll trust myself there, but I will start by just cleaning the bogey and truck wheels because if I remember correctly, at least the truck here uh, does have some power pickups on it, so might as well clean those. Not too dirty. And uh, then I'll steal the body off and uh, we'll have a look what's inside. Uh, this is another split chassis model, uh, like the mainline Royal Scott was. So, what fun that is. Uh, this one won't take long. I've got two of these to do, but they don't take long because uh, we can't, the motors are all enclosed and I don't open up the motors. So, one body screw at the back here. Uh, there may be another at the front, I don't exactly remember. Yes, there's another one at the front. The fun part with these is getting the body back on afterwards. It's a nightmare, as far as I remember. So we'll have to see how we get on with this today. Okay, I think I should be able to lift this out very carefully. Well, not very carefully, as it turned out. So there you go, and look, even the chassis is streamlined. I suppose that's so it actually fits inside. All right. So as you can see on this, it's another split chassis. The motor is pretty big, but what is huge is the uh, the worm drive here. And I assume that acts as a flywheel as well. So it hasn't got a flywheel. It's just got a very big, heavy worm drive. Okay, I can see a hair on here, but I think I can grab that with my fingers. Okay, let's get to the axles then. And I've written on a little note that I don't need to remove the bogey and truck. So let's hope that's true. I suppose it might not be true. I don't know why, I wouldn't have written it if it wasn't true, so I'll trust myself on it. And uh, then this is quite an awkward bit, getting this off. Um, but what you need to do, oh, it's not too awkward. Uh, it's just lifted up. Yeah, no, I was right, you don't have to remove them. It's come off quite nicely, but uh, of course the rear truck here is soldered on, there's wires, so you can't get that out of the way too much. Now, as you can see, we've got a uh, split axle here. Can you see the axle there that's split? Um, it has come off. So I might glue that on. Let's have a look. Oh, we've got a few popped out here. Uh, so what I think I'll do is I'll clean them and I'll super glue that on. Uh, I probably would have gotten away without doing that. Uh, and obviously I've decided against it, but uh, I've just pulled that off really easily. So I'll fix that before it gets any worse. So I'll clean this up with a little bit of IPA and then we'll get some glue on. Uh, so I think they're quartered already. They've got square pegs that go into them, so quartering shouldn't be an issue. I've just got to make sure they go in the right spot. Oh, this is an interesting bit of surgery that I'm going to catch on stream. Okay, so a little super glue. Um, I'm going to probably... Let's think about the best way to do this. I'm going to use a needle to apply the super glue. So let's just slide this out. Oh, I didn't mean to slide it out all the way. Whoops. Like that. Is that right? Making sure I'm not ruining the quartering while I'm doing this. Okay, and I'll get a bit of super glue on this needle. And this way I know I'm not going to accidentally spray super glue everywhere. And apply it to the crack as well. And also to the axle. And now if I shove that on, 
and I'll use a dry cotton bud to get rid of the excess and that should normally just hold it in place. Okay, and uh, I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, the center one is going to be a lot more fun to try and do, uh, but that did come off pretty easy, so I might have to try that one. Okay, uh, so again, let's clean up the oil out of the way, because I don't think super glue works very well if it's covered in oil. So clean the oil up. Oh, I wasn't expecting to have to do this. I didn't realize the, the uh, well, I mean, normally you get splits in the axles, but I didn't realize this one was as bad as that. Okay, let's pop that off again. Oh, that one's not actually coming off too easily. Is it? No, that's not coming off too easy. I don't like that actually. That is a really quite a shoddy design. Anyway, I've shoved it on. I've shoved it on quite a long way. Hopefully I've not shoved it on too far. Um, I, don't, I don't know why it, it's possible to shove it on. It should just sit in place, shouldn't it? But no, that seems to be okay. Uh, I think I'll leave that one then on second thoughts. Uh, of course, when I test this, if it goes wrong, uh, I'll need to probably come and adjust that again because, like I say, I have just shoved it onto the axle. And it's not too tight. As you can see, it's not, it's not pinching, so I don't think it will be a problem. But you never know, do you? So... We might have to revisit this one in a few minutes. But I'll carry on with the rest of the service and make sure that this is all tickety-boo. Just let that go. Give this gear some oil. I suppose this is what makes them split, the oil, which is another reason why I don't tend to oil normally the axles. Because um, they don't need it and it just acts as an insulator. So, okay, let's put this back on then. And obviously I don't want to be running this just yet. I need to give that glue a chance to dry. But I use Loctite and it dries pretty quick especially if you use small amounts. Right, so I need to keep an eye on these wires, you know, these little wires that go to the rear truck. I need to make sure they're not getting caught, but they're not. Right, it doesn't actually clip on this, uh, this base plate, it just slides on, which I prefer, because if they clip on, you've got to put quite a bit of, you've got to bend them quite a bit to get them off, or you've got to, you know, slide your screwdriver into the gaps and try and ease them off. I don't like having to do that. It's not good for them, but sometimes it's got to be done. Now that doesn't seem to have gone in very well. I wonder if I've got the right screws here. No, I don't think that, that can't be the right screw. Well done, Sam. Yeah, no, that wasn't the right screw. That's the right screw. Okay. So I'll very, very lightly oil the motor. Uh, I'm not going to oil it brush side, I'm just going to oil it worm side because I don't want to over oil that, I don't want any oil getting to the brushes. And oil this worm, and there's actually another bearing at the other side of the worm drive, it's so big, so I'll oil that. Oil the gears behind it, and let's flip it back upside down then, and secure it with the helping hand, and we'll put a little bit of oil onto the valve gear and such, and we'll see how that goes. How's everyone doing? Let's check in. Uh, got to slide your screwdriver into the gaps, says Park. <laughs> yes, that's true. I'm not going to, not going down the innuendo route today, Mark. But uh, feel free to if you want to. Right, a little bit of oil. I tell you what, I think it is time to top up this oil pen. Oil still coming out of it, but I reckon next time I'm going to have to put some more in. If I can make this last today, I will, and uh, put some more in for tomorrow. But if not, might have to do it live. It's a bit of a messy job. Okay, that looks good to me. Right, let's give it a test then. Uh, that glue's had plenty of time to go off, so let's give that a try. Now, as I noted earlier, there is power going to these um, rear, this rear truck. So I'm going to try and power it from there, although the connection might not be brilliant. So if it doesn't work, I might have to connect it directly to the chassis again. Yeah, not a great connection there. <laughs> so, let me connect it directly to the chassis, and that should be quite easily done. Uh, very easily done, in fact, with this one. Sorry about that, probably just put my head in the shot, didn't I? 
Oh, still not moving. Why is that then? Bear with me a second. Doesn't seem to be running. Ah, I wonder. No, none of the rods or anything have seized up. Let's just see how free this is to turn. That's weird, that. Oh, yeah, that isn't too free. Hmm, that's strange. Let's double check they are still quartered, then. Yeah, that looks like it. Yep. Hmm. Oh, I see. Yep, we've got an issue with the rods. Okay, that should be easy to fix. There we go. Yeah, you've just got to watch you don't disturb the rods when you take them out for servicing. Uh, right, so where does this need to be? This needs to sit down on here. Bear with me, technical difficulties. I'm glad I spotted that, actually. Yeah, that needs to be down like that. So that is that better? I'm not too sure. Let's just give it power again, and we'll see if that works. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of these Backman 84s. I mean, they're nice models, but the mechanisms leave a bit of a bit to be desired. Sorry, I'm not really showing you this too great, am I? Oh no, still not got anything. That's really weird because the wheels feel free, and when I turn it, it almost it feels virtually free. So if the motor the motor should have no problem turning that. Keep turning. I wonder if it's because it doesn't like running upside down. That might be an issue. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, it. I wonder if I've got an issue with the power supply. Let me just see if I get a short when I put them together. Oh no, the power supply is live. Hmm, this is an interesting one. What an odd problem. I really don't want to have to split this chassis apart and test the motor in isolation. That is not a nice thing to have to do. Right, let's try this again. Oh, it did move. Hey, I wonder if this is just needing more current. It might be. It might just be lacking current. I don't know. What voltage am I putting into this? don't want to put more than 12 in. Ooh. Right, I need to try this again. Let's push this up. Yeah, I reckon we're just running low on current for this. For some reason, it seems to want a bit of current. There we go. Right, so now I'm kind of stuck with it running in my hand. <laughs> yeah, the voltage is shot up now. Like I say, this is only a 300 milliamp control, and if this model hasn't run for six months, it's probably just needing a bit more than that to get started. Right. So basically what happened is, do you see here on the, on the valve gear, uh, one of these little pieces here shot upwards. And so uh, I'm trying to hold this and not... Uh, if I let go of that bogey, it's going to fall onto the valve gear, so I've got to hold on to it. So I can't really point. Uh, but yeah, it's part of that Walshirts valve gear just here in front of the... Uh, the cylinders that had shot up and I think that was causing problems but no that's okay at, l at least it looks like my little fix to the uh, split chassis wheels has worked okay so let's flip this upside down and uh, let me try and clean the wheels and again I'm hoping that isn't going to fall back down If it falls back down, it will jam the valve gear. In fact, I could just hold it in place, can't I? Obviously, when, when it's running normally, gravity's holding that down, so it's not a problem. But upside down like this, it's free to fall. So I'm just going to hold it. So this finger here is holding that in place. And with the other hand, I'll just clean it. Jeff is giving some advice on how to get a Backman Gordon. I've back and made some more Gordons then, last, last I found out they, uh, they'd run out completely. Well, they'd sold out, I should say. Yeah, this A4 is running quite nicely now. I don't know why that is. Like I say, it is not a very powerful power supply, this. So I think we were just throttling it. But the wheels are good and clean, I must say. And this Loco has run a few times in running sessions, so I'm surprised at that. 
But actually, it should be running much more nicely now that I've glued that axle in and shoved these axles together. I wonder if they're... Are they biting? There's not a lot of give on these axles. They really are firm. That one is extremely firm. But again, it feels good and free. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. It just feels as though they need a little bit more left and right movement. This back one has a bit. This centre one's got almost none. And this front one's got absolutely none. Uh, but I guess we'll try Golden Eagle because she's up for servicing next. And if she's the same, we'll know it's designed to be that way. Okay, I'm going to put the body back on. And we'll see how this works. I like uh, the body, by the way. To put this body back on is a nightmare, like I said before. So let's try this. Uh, I think the front needs to sort of lug underneath here, like that, and then the back sits down into a little hole. Well, what do you know? I think I got it on first time. But you can't say that until the screws are in, so let me try and put these screws in. All right, I'm just trying to figure out which screw needs to go where. I think I know which is which. So the flat screw goes at the back. Oh, this is fun. Got to get it through the gaps. You see, this is, this is the only issue with not taking off the back truck. Uh, you've got to sort of navigate around it to get the screw back in. So I've stuck a magnet onto my screwdriver so that this screw is really quite well fixed onto the screwdriver. And hopefully I won't dislodge it. Yeah, it's in. <laughs> Thank goodness. That could have been half an hour of our lives lost, couldn't it? I, back, I buy uh, Backman locomotives mostly in trainworld.com. Okay, so I assume that's in the US though, right? Because uh, in the UK, I don't know if places like that would ship to us. So if you're in the UK and you want the Backman Thomas stuff, it's uh, a bit more fun than just uh, popping onto a website like that. How's everyone doing? Jacob saying, Sam, I love it. Uh, Flying Scotsman Production says, no problem in Australia. It's, it's, fine to, it's hard to find, sorry, British companies. Yeah. I always take off the bogies, says Steamer, the steam train. Yeah, I, I mean, if it's necessary, I'll take off the bogies as well. But uh, because especially that back one was uh, wired to the chassis, uh, it's just another thing to have to faff with. So I decided I'd leave it on. Right, let's give her a track test then. bit nervous about this one. I'm not 100% convinced that she's spot on. But uh, these, some of these Backman split chassis never are. And in fact, yesterday I got one into service and the uh, axles had failed on it and it was brand new. So it's not just, you know, use that makes them fail. Right, let's see if that's on properly. No, I don't think it is. All right, let's give it a shot. Yeah, that seems to be okay. I just wonder whether the gauging has been thrown out or not. So I'll take it round a curve. I know you won't see this. No, that's okay. So on third radius, it's okay. Uh, and I can live with that. Yeah, that's all right. And at slow speed, it's still relatively smooth at slow speed, which is a good sign. Okay, so that is Silver Link. Uh, let's have a look for comparison then. Uh, because Golden Eagle is next. So bear with me, I'll just fill that out in my little book. So I need to note down here uh, that I've fixed the split chassis. Uh, no, not the split chassis. Uh, fixed split axle. And it was the front one, I think, wasn't it? Uh, okay, and I can tick that off because it works. Uh, that was uh, June 18. June 19. That's the phone again. I'm not going to answer it. Okay, give it a tick. Uh, so that's Silver Link done. Uh, right, let me do Golden Eagle then. Okay, so Golden Eagle I also bought in December 16. It says split axles glued, so I've obviously already done those, and it says rear wheels straightened. <laughs> so it sounds as though the rear wheels uh, had a bit of a bend on them, I don't know. Right, let's pop this down. Let me switch cameras for you. And hopefully then, if I've already uh, if I've already fixed the axles on this, very, very hopefully, it won't be an issue. 
but let's find out. Right, a little bit of a clean up. I always like this one more than uh, Silver Link. Okay, how's everybody going on? Uh, Ren says, I'm watching from school. <laughs> what a bad man. Hey, I've been on the Flying Scotsman before. It was so cool. Says, lucky lady, please. That's good to hear. Thomas Kissill says, is the Wall of Fame still up? Yes, it's still up. Uh, it's, it's really getting there now. We're nearly up to the ceiling. I'll have to show that. Uh, Mark says, I'm ringing Sam. Yeah, you see, that's why I wouldn't give anyone my, my phone number. I don't want phones ringing while I'm streaming. Okay, so let's get the body off then. And it's nice and easy, this, because we've only just I've only just done it. So I can remember exactly how it all comes apart. The one at the front. And again, I'm not going to take the trucks and bogies off. They can stay put. Okay, uh, lift this out. And I'll do exactly as I did before, actually. Uh, let me just grab this helping hand and prop it up. I'll start by just cleaning the uh, the trucks and bogies just so that they're nice and clean. Put these cotton buds in the bin. And uh, then we'll have a little look at the axles and see what these are looking like. Now I reckon my A4 Silver Link was brand new but this Golden Eagle was a used one I reckon so uh, that's probably why her axles were broken to start with. But again if you catch them and fix them it should be okay. But uh, I'm glad they don't make them like this anymore, let's put it that way. Okay, quick axle clean. I'm eating my sandwiches, says Renz. Oh, he must be in a country where it's lunchtime. It's only 11 o'clock. Oh, I suppose it's quite close to lunchtime here then. Right, let's get this base plate off. And we'll have a look. Remembering this time which screws go where. Right, let's take a look. Right, so yeah, you can see there is a split on this axle. Yeah, you can see that? But I think I would have, like it, it says in my notes that I've already fixed these. Ah, no, this is the one I fixed. You can see that's all glued up. And the one at the back is sturdy. That is not moving. So that's pretty good. And I actually forgot to check how much give they had on the axle while the base plate was on, so I'll have to check that. But uh, now then, let's just clean the axles. Oh, and these are a little bit dirty. It's always nice when you find dirty axles because it means you're actually, you actually have a reason for doing the service. If it's clean every time, it'd be boring, wouldn't it? You'd just feel like you're doing it for the sake of it. Uh, no, I think, uh, I think Golden Eagle here has run quite a bit on the channel over the last 12 months, which is why. But yeah, quite a bit of dirt on the, uh, on the chassis as well. Well, that's good. At least I'm doing some good here then. And the front set. Lift these out. Yeah, the front set has been glued, so that must be the one I did uh, on my notes. Um, but uh, luckily, it looks solid as a rock, and uh, it's managed 12 months since I've done that, so that's good. Again, quite a dirty axle here. Just set that back. Chuck that cotton bud away. Grab myself another one. I wonder, does Sam have Dominion of Can Canada, says Jacob. Uh, no, I don't have that one. Uh, to be honest, I had to stop buying A4s because there was a, a period where I would just buy A4s, sort of like one a month. Uh, so I've got quite a few. I reckon I must have seven or eight, um, but not Dominion of Canada, although I, I do like the look of her. She does look lovely. Turn this. And I can see that the middle axle... Uh, with the gear on it has also got a bit of failure going on as well um, but uh, it is it does feel solid as a rock so again I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess around too much with it right let me put that base plate back on then and at this time I will give it a little feel <laughs> I know Mark's laughing at that I didn't mean to say it like that uh, I'll feel how these axles are and see if they've got any plenty of give on them or not hopefully not because if if so then it means my silver links got a problem Right, screw these back in. Yep, that's definitely the right screw this time. That's good to hear. And that second one. I'll tell you what, these have these have got a little bit of give on them. Not an awful lot though. I think we'll be all right to be honest. Uh, Silver Link ran okay. Right, let me tighten these up. There we go. And uh, let's just have a quick look at the motor. Same motor, of course. Look at the size of that flywheel. 
Well, it's not even a flywheel, it's a worm drive. It's a big thing, look at it. Anyway, I'll, let's stop looking at worm drives. Now let's get this thing oiled. Okay, no more oil coming out, so I'm going to need to replace it. Uh, so bear with me, I've just got to have a little dig in this uh, drawer behind me, uh, behind the camera. So I'm going to try not to send the camera flying while I do this and find another set of oil. So I used the Hemline sewing machine oil, here it is. And just in case I spill any, I'm going to move Golden Eagle right out of the way. There we go. Uh, I can put the lid on that, actually. Yeah, there we go. Uh, weirdly, these oiling pens, they unscrew the opposite direction to the direction you would normally unscrew something. So it's really strange because you obviously you go to undo it and it won't budge. I don't know why they've done it like that. All right, a bit more oil. Normally, I'd go down to the bathroom and do this over the sink or something <laughs> or the toilet. Um, but uh, I'm taking a risk and I'm doing it here today. Whoa, there we go. Well, that's very, very full. I've literally filled it to the brim, but I didn't spill a drop. Ah, I must be on form today. Okay, let's see what I mean? That is not the normal way you would screw something on. There we go. So obviously now the oil is going to be just flowing out of this pen, so I'll need to bear that in mind when I oil the linkage rods. Right, where's my water? I'm going to have a little drink. Get a sore throat from all this talking. I wasn't well last week. Last week I had a bit of a cold and I've still got a, a bit of a sore throat from it. Okay. So let's oil this motor then. And again, the oil's going to come flying out of this. So need to be careful. And there we go. You want plenty of oil on the worm drive, of course. Not so much on the motor axle. There we go. Let's just feel how, how easily this turns. No, it's about the same as Silverlink. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm pleased with that. Right, let's, uh, let's do this testing process again then. Uh, let's flip it upside down. Give it a little bit of oil on the linkage rods and things. And I'm not squeezing this pen at all now because the oil's sort of desperate to get out. A bit of fluff there. I forgot to clean the... Uh, the uh, the base didn't I but it wasn't dirty if I see any uh, sort of fluff on it or whatever I'll get the paintbrush on it but this one looked good and clean so I didn't a little bit of oil on all these points there we go and just while I'm thinking about it I might as well give it a quick dust over but I can't see anything on it right well I'm not going to bother trying to power the rear truck because that just was a disaster last time so let's go straight to the chassis again and again there's some really nice square bits of the chassis that you can just clip straight onto and it's not a problem right I'm just trying to think is everything back together uh, nothing's gonna snag is it I hope not okay give it some juice as you can see this one actually runs quite a bit nicer than Silverlink does yeah that's lovely much nicer this one actually uh, so yeah, I'm a, will I still have Silver Link in a couple of years' time? I don't know. We'll have to see how she goes, but uh, I'll just have to be careful with that one. And after the stream, I'll get her running properly, perhaps on the rolling road. Even there you go, and uh, see how she see how she does over a long period. But I'm not too worried. I mean, if she was running really badly, I'd need to strip her down again and uh, see if I can get the gauge on her. Maybe see if the gauge is okay. Make sure all the axles are solid and straight. But they looked alright to me. There we go. Quite a bit of dirt coming off these wheels, so I'm going to go for it again. Because again, she gets quite a bit of use. How's everyone doing? Every time that Sam says oil, the US are on the way. <laughs> I don't think they want my oil. I've not got that much of it. I certainly didn't crack it myself or whatever. Wobbly back wheel, says Map the Dragon. Yeah, it is a wobbly back wheel. It says on my notes that I straightened it. Um, to be honest, with these split chassis uh, models, with the uh, plastic axles, uh, you've got to be careful with how much force you put onto it. And because I think that's been glued on, uh, I don't want to mess with it too much. So as long as it runs okay and it doesn't stutter across points, uh, it's okay. But yeah, you're right. This wheel here, you mean, very slightly wobbly. But once it's on the track, it's not too bad. Right, let's give this a try then. And to be honest, she runs nicely, and she runs nicely on track as well. So, like I say, if she's derailing and 
and getting stuck on points, then you'd have to do something about it. But you, you, they have to be pretty extreme before that's the case. So I think we'll be all right with that. And she's always been like it. I mean, I have straightened it before, but you've got to be careful with how much pressure you put on these things. Okay, that's in. Shove this down. There we go. Yeah, these have got quite a bit more give than the Silverlink had. I mean, look at that. Can you see that moving? Silverlink didn't have any of that on any of her wheels. But I don't know how that can be because the plastic axle spacers actually space them, <laughs> funnily enough. Uh, so they can't be out of gauge. Maybe the centre one could be, but I don't, I don't think it was because it got around my curves without slowing down. Oops, I've just chucked the screw across the room. That wasn't very smart. Let me see if I can find it. Bear with me a second. Uh, basically, I've just uh, <laughs> I've put the magnet onto the screwdriver and the screw shot off. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I failed slightly there. But uh, what I'll do is, if I can't find it, I'll just stick in a different screw temporarily and uh, I'll find it after the stream because I don't want to spend loads of time looking for a screw. Um... I heard it land over here, actually. Okay, never mind. Uh, I'll find that later on. Um, I'll just have to remember not to do any vacuuming or anything until I've done that. Okay, let me put another suitable screw in. In fact, I think I've got a Backman one. Somewhere. I think this one will do. Oh, darn it. <laughs> I was hoping I wouldn't do something stupid like that today. Never mind. Oops, let's try and get this in straight. Yeah, that's a good fit. Actually, that one's a perfect fit. So even if I don't find the right screw, that isn't too big of a deal. Okay, shall we get this tested then? Uh, Ginty Steam is saying, no, it was 126 miles an hour. Are people arguing about Mallard's top speed? I think it was 126, actually, wasn't it? Although I'm not, I've not seen the conversation. Okay, let's give this a test run then. Let's see how she gets on. As I say, I'm, I'm pretty sure this one's going to run okay. Uh, but then again, that is tempting fate in a big way, isn't it? So we'll see what happens. I'm just double checking the body's on properly. I think it is. Right, let's see how she runs compared with Silverlink then. Oops, wrong controller. Yeah, pretty much the same. Yeah, that's pretty good. That looks good to me. Yeah, that's fairly good and smooth. Let's try it nice and slow. Yeah, I think her slow speed is very slightly better than Silverlink, but that's to be expected uh, if she's uh, messy on the wheels. Okay, let me put her back then, and I reckon I've got time to do just one more, so let me just set these back down, and I'll find out which one is next. Yeah, I'm just looking at that Silverlink again. It is strange that those wheels are so tight on there. I'll, have to, I'll probably look into that, actually, at some point. Okay, fine. Uh, one more then. Let's just do five today, and I might come back and do five tomorrow. Let me know if you want me to do this again tomorrow. Right, let's give Silverlink a tick. No, sorry, Golden Eagle gets a tick. And this is June 18. June 19, I'll do another one. Give her a tick. Okay, we've got a diesel up next then. It's a Hornby diesel, the class 29 slash 21, it says. And it's in green. So you'll have to bear with me while I find this one. Uh, let me just find it in the book. 29, where are you? To Bill, class 29. So this is quite a new one. Well, it's not a new model, but I didn't get it all that long ago. I got this one in May 2017. And so this is its second ever service with me. All right, let me uh, set this camera back on then, and I'll go and find it. Uh, so it's... I don't know what you'd call it. Would you call, did these get the name the Baby Warship? Can't remember whether it was those or another class. Uh, so I'm just at my diesel drawer now, or one of them, uh, just see if I can spy it. Uh, it might actually be the other side of the room, but I'll make sure it's not here first. No, I reckon it is over the other side. All right, bear with me, folks. I'm just going to find her, and then we'll get started on her. And this is a Ringfield motor, so we all like seeing those, don't we? He says with a glazed smile. Uh, no, she's not there either. 
Ooh, that's interesting. So, play a little game now. It's called Where's the Class 29? <laughs> I reckon she's at the back of one of these drawers. I do apologise for this. Let's see if I can spy her. Oh, I can see her. Yeah, she's at the back. Basically, I've got a row of locos side by side, and uh, that leaves some space at the back. So she's just sitting across them at the back. Okay, I've got a class 29 in BR green. Yep, yeah, that fits. Okay, there she is. I'll just check in with everybody, see how it's doing. Um, Steam other Steam Train says, boo. I have a saw, says Adam. That sounds awkward. Uh, all the A4s, COD, go, abate, 116, says Brandon. Well, thanks, Brandon. <laughs> Oh right, didn't pick that up. Uh, I love seeing these servicing bits because I'm going to do that with my N-Scale engine, says Jacob. Oh, good luck. I've not done a lot of N-Scale servicing. In fact, I've not done any. Uh, so, yeah, no, it's probably the same thing from what I've seen. It's a lot of the N-Scale logos work in a similar way. But obviously, it's all that. It's very much more slightly fiddly. Okay, so what I think I will do here is I won't take the body off. For many years, I actually took the bodies of these uh, diesels off to service, but I think that's an unnecessary step. What you can actually do is if you grab a screwdriver, you can just flip it out like this, and uh, then you've got the motor bogey like that, and you don't have to take the body off. So let me just pull this wire off. There we go. And uh, let's get this serviced. Right. Now, depending on, uh, actually, I'm gonna probably have to knock the wheels out of this one, aren't I? So this is quite a, a thorough process with this. So there's the base, you can take that one off. Uh, let's take out the gears. Now I'm a bit like a, a well-oiled machine when it comes to servicing these ring field motors because with my servicing business, these are the ones that get sent in the most often. So I just kind of uh, go into autopilot with these. So first things first, we'll take all the gears out. Let me get myself a new clean cotton bud. Take the gears out and give those a basic clean. And that just keeps everything running nicely. There we go. As I say, shouldn't be too dirty because this one I got last year and it would have had a very, very thorough service last year because, of course, when you buy a second-hand locomotive, uh, which may not have run for many years and certainly may not have had a service for many years, especially if it's been sat in a warehouse like at Rails of Sheffield or Hatton's, uh, so it's always worth giving it a service before you run it just, you know, so that you're not sending it to an early grave or anything like that. So yeah, this one's not been serviced in a year, but when it was serviced last, it got a really good clean and sort of it sort out. So this should be fine, but uh, we'll give it a give it a good clean anyway. Gears are a little bit grubby, uh, but she has done quite a bit of running. Okay, let me then take out the brushes and the springs without letting the springs ping away. There we go. Can you see that? Yeah, just about. Uh, the brushes aren't stuck to the springs on this occasion, so I'm going to have to bring those out separately. Well, that's one that's come out. I've got one there. Uh, and because I'll have to tap the wheels out to do this, I'll probably need to get the other one, and there it is. Okay, so while I remember, I'll clean those brushes and springs to start with. There we go, top and bottom. Uh, these brushes are starting to wear a little bit, so it might not be too long before these need to be replaced. But in my experience, the brushes last forever. They, they really do last a long time. Depends how much you run them, of course. Okay, this is the spring, or well, one of them. Okay, quite a few people watching now. It's gone up to 65 and I saw 70 earlier, so that's pretty cool. Hello everybody, if you've only just joined or whatever. Hope you're all doing well on this lovely Friday morning. How come old, old American diesels look a lot better than British ones? Ooh, that's a bit controversial. I suppose some people might disagree with you there. Right then. Let's knock out some of these wheels. Let's uh, adjust this camera. Now this is always a little bit rudimentary. Oh no. I think that's the best I can do, but you will see it. Right. So I'm going to knock out these wheels, and I've got to do this in order to get access to the commutator, and I do like to clean the commutators on these. So there's a probably nicer ways to do this, but I, uh, I do it this way. 
So tighten that up nicely. Uh, now I need to find some of my little punchy things, uh, so bear with me. Uh, I've moved everything out of the way to do this servicing stream, so uh, it's a little bit of a, a mess outside of the shot. Uh, but yeah, here we go. And I'm going to use a big hammer, but don't be fooled by the big hammer. You've got to go pretty gentle with it so as you don't absolutely destroy the thing. Yeah, those are the right ones. So as I say, I don't really have the specialist equipment for doing this. Uh, you can get a proper punch or whatever, but uh, I've done this for years and uh, it works just fine. The only problem is the uh, the vice doesn't always hold it too great, so you've got to you've got to tighten it up. But you don't want to ruin the chassis or anything, so just very gently tap this out. There we go. That's one. So you see what I mean? You really don't need to whack it with the hammer and in fact if you did you'd probably ruin something so yeah being gentle is the case you don't really need to whack them hard as long as you get it in the right direction there we go that's the second one out and actually you've got extra benefits to taking out the uh, the wheels like that because let me move this back because you can even clean the axles, and obviously the axles of these uh, Ringfield locos do conduct power uh, to the loco. So it's it's worth it to actually spend the time cleaning these. But uh, obviously, be careful knocking the wheels out, because if you wreck them, uh, they're not going to run properly. Okay, so I'll clean the axles, and if they're really really filthy, and as you can see, these are, but uh, the dirt shouldn't be. It should be quite superficial. If they're sort of rusty or ruined or whatever, you probably want to get the Dremel on them and polish them up. But uh, I don't think we're going to need to do that. No, they look all right. So that's one. Let's get the other one. Hello, Sam says Kevin. How's things? I'm fine, thanks, Kevin. How are you? I'm amazed that there's anyone here on a Friday morning. I thought I'd just do this as a trial and get you know, 10 people watching, whatever. And here we are with 71, so it's quite interesting. I can't believe that people actually want to watch me service models, but uh, I'm glad you do. It's actually a lot more fun doing this with people watching and talking to people at the same time uh, than just doing it on your own. I'd normally just put some music on or whatever and, and just do it on my own. Uh, so I quite like this. It's taking longer because I'm sort of, I'm talking through the process, but, uh, I, I don't mind that at all. Right, so now that the wheels are out of the way, the wheels used to be here, of course, we can lift the front plate off. So I'll use my screwdriver just to gently ease this off. You don't want to wreck the clips. There we go. And uh, let's clean this up then. And again, if it is, if I clean the armature, the commutator, I should say, and it's still filthy looking, I'll get the Dremel onto it. It looks like this one might be. Look at that. Bit grubby. But you never know until you've cleaned it. Uh, I, I didn't write down on my sheet whether or not I scaled it last year when it was new. Uh, I would expect I would have done, but I'm not 100% sure. So we'll have to see. Uh, so I always clean the uh, the commutators in situ. I don't hammer the uh, the gear out and get them out. Uh, just because I, I don't think it's necessary. Obviously, if there's loads of hair and rubbish inside here, uh, you can. You would probably want to take that out. But uh, this one's all right, this one's pretty good and clean. Okay, let's clean this little armature then. And is it coming up clean? It is actually coming up pretty clean and I've only done a little bit of a rub on it, so if we keep going. Yeah, that one's gonna be all right. Trouble is I'm quite reluctant to Dremel them. Uh, I don't mind doing it, I will do it if it's necessary, but I'll only do it uh, if absolutely necessary, because it is abrasive, and if I did it every year, for example, on a model, uh, it wouldn't take long before that uh, commutator was uh, totally shredded up and ruined. So you want to watch it with that. Uh, but uh, maybe tomorrow, if I do this again tomorrow, potentially I will be doing that with some of the models, if some come up um, that uh, need it, so we'll see. But uh, it looks like we've gotten away with it today. Couple of those Backman models, it wasn't even a possibility, but uh, might end up doing it tomorrow. We'll have to look. I'll I'll have a look. A little bit. I'll have a look on the list in a second, and I'll let you know which locos I'll be doing tomorrow. And if you're interested by them, you can drop in. I'll probably do it at the same time. Probably start about tenish, and there might be some more people here. Who knows? With it being uh, a Saturday, and not a working day, 
Although I suppose Saturday is a working day. Right, so I'm just going to clear up the back end of the chassis before I start putting all this back on. Make sure there's no debris on here. I don't think there is. It looks pretty good and clean, actually. Uh, but again, that's probably because I did it last time. Okay, that's looking good. So let's reassemble this thing then. Put this front plate back on. And what I'll do is I'll put the brushes in and make sure the motor's running okay. I haven't been actually testing with the multimeter today, uh, the motors, because they've all been tested. Uh, there's no point testing them every year. But every couple of years I do test them with the multimeter just to make sure that the coils are in good nick. But uh, it says on my notes that all these have been done just last year, so I won't waste my time doing it. But obviously if they start to run badly, then I would want to check that just to double check. All right. That's one, that's one brush in. Let's grab the other one. Put that in there. Push that down. So that's the brushes back in. And let's just test that the motor is free to turn. Yeah, that's going okay. A little bit of oil then. And again, I've only just filled this up, so I've got to be careful. Yeah, that's that. A little bit on that side. Fine, and let me just try the motor without a load at all. If you try these ring fields, you can get them running uh, without any gears or anything, and it means that they can have a really nice run without any load at all. Not many models you can do that with easily, but it's quite easy to do it with these. Okay. So as you can tell, that sounds pretty happy. In fact, I'll leave that there for a second and get myself a little sip of water. Just let that run in. So while that's going, uh, let's see what everyone's saying. Thomas Kissill says, at Steam of the Steam Train, try the class 91 out for the size then. Okay. Uh, you should stream World of Subways 3, says Mark. Yeah, that would be fun. It was a love-hate relationship with that game. Uh, Kinu Kayla says, you should do a class 66 service video. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, the GWR Terrier says, bye. So, sounds, sounds as though he's off. Right, let's start putting this thing back together then. That's had a little bit of a run. It sounds good and healthy to me. So let's start then by popping these wheels back in. And here's the way I do it. I don't use a gauge or anything because you don't need to with these. But usually I would recommend using a gauge. Okay, so let's put this back in. So this wheel goes in there. Oh, you can't see this. There you go, that pops in there. Stick that on there. Oh, let's make sure there's no oil on that end bit. Hang on, let me just clean this. <laughs> it's an inconvenient moment to be cleaning something. Make sure that's good and clean. If there's oil on it, it might slide back off again, which is why I want to make sure. So then you just very carefully make sure they're square like that. And then just push it on. And actually, I got that pretty much spot on straight away, but I'll tighten it a little tiny bit more. You want just a little bit of give on it. That's it. So as you can see, that's running quite nicely. Notice I didn't put any oil on that, and that's because the uh, chassis has to pick up through those axles, so you don't really need to put oil on it, unless you've got uh, whatever it's called, electro lube. But I don't use that, so it's better for me that I don't do it. Right, let's clean this one up then. I already did this, but I'll just double check because there was some oil on that other one. And obviously the geared, the geared wheel here needs to go where the gears are going to meet it, otherwise it won't work. There you go, make sure they're level. Yep, yeah, that's pretty much spot on first time actually, that's not bad. So they've both got a little bit of give on them, and they're both free to move, and you can just check that by spinning them and seeing if they work. And now we can put this thing back together and get the wheels cleaned and such. Oops, zoom out a touch. All right. So now the gears can go back in. Let's put a little bit of oil where the gears are going to sit. Oh, that's not a little bit of oil. See what I mean? You can have these accidents when you've only just filled up the oil in pen. I'll tell you what, I'm going to get some, some uh, IPA on that and start again, I think. Too much oil. Yeah, too much oil can be a real damage, actually, so you want to make sure there's not too much. Okay, let's start again. Let's dry that. Right, a little bit this time. 
There you go, that's more like it. So what I do is I stick these in. Now a lot of this oil you'll end up cleaning off again once you get it running. Uh, and just make sure that you've got those in. If they run nicely, uh, then you know that you've gauged the wheels up properly. Put a little oil on that one. Put a little oil on that one. And now we'll just jam these other gears back in. And I'll make sure those are sitting in nicely. Oil on the gear, oil on these gears. And there we go. And let's put the brush clip no, it's not a brush clip. Uh, the, I don't know what you'd call this. The gear retaining clip? I don't know. This one's a bit of a dodgy one. There you go. So there we are. That should be all back together now. I just need to plug this back in. That basically connects the chassis to one brush. And uh, now we can just give this a little bit of power. And uh, we know that the motor runs, but uh, it'll be interesting just to check that the wheels go around okay and that all the gears are meshing properly which they almost always are. Okay, a little bit of juice. And look at that for a crawl, that's all right, isn't it? All right, speed that up. Sounds good and healthy. And now basically what's happening is all the, all the oil I've put onto those gears is uh, being splashed on straight onto those traction tires. So I'll let that run, give it a bit of a thrash. 12 volts, there we go. See if you can see any, can you see the tires glistening? So obviously you don't want to put that onto the track until you've done something about it. So you let it run for a few seconds, let it let the oil run its course. And then you do the same thing with your wet cotton bud with IPA and just clean them off. There we go. Now it's not too important that these traction tyres are clean, but I like to keep them clean just so that they're not dragging dirt all over the track. Of course on this bogey it's these uh, non-traction tyred wheels which uh, do the picking up, so you want to make, well, you want to take extra care to make sure those are clean. There we go. The traction tyres are sliding a bit. You might normally, you, you might find that uh, once you get the traction tyres wet with IPA and oil, uh, that they slide around. So you want to make sure that you are actually cleaning them and they're not just sliding or slipping, whatever. If in doubt, just use a dry cotton bud, dry them up, and uh, let it run. And if they're glistening again with oil, you know you need to do further cleaning. So I'll let those dry. Let's clean the pickup wheels. Which actually look quite dirty to the eye. And that cotton bud's come off a bit dirty as well. Right, other one. Oh, I know you can't see this now. There we go. If I hold it there, you should be able to. So it seems to be running pretty nicely, actually. I can't fault that. And now I'll grab a dry cotton bud and we'll dry up these traction tyres. And we'll see what they look like. Still a bit of dirt on them. Right, let's see. Yeah, they look good to me. I'm just just to be on the absolutely on the safe side. I'm going to give them another little clean. So let's turn the speed up. Oh, listen to that rumble! Can you hear that rumble on the stream? It's sitting right down on the table, so it's kind of vibrating the whole table. The wheels of Sam's Loco goes round and round, says Matt the Dragon. Round and round, round and round. Service your fastest model train, says Tank Engine 75. I suppose that would be an 040. And the 040s are dead easy to service. Depending on how thorough you want to be. It's just a quick service. You can do it in five minutes. Right. Try those off. Let's have another look. Yeah, they look spotlessly clean now. So that's perfect. So what I can do is I can put this bogey back into the class 29. And it's had a good run, so I don't need to test it that much on the track. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I need to actually put the bogey plate back on. Right, so let's just figure out which way this has to go. Little end goes here. That sits in there. And then we just clip it in. 
There we go. Make sure that is actually in properly. Yeah, it is. And uh, now it looks like a bogey again, which is exactly what you want. Right, so we plug this back in. Don't forget the little wire. And that, of course, connects to the other bogey. And now we can hook that back in, push it down, and that's gone into place. And now what I'll do is I'll just clear, clean the wheels on this other bogey here, uh, because obviously that is half of the the power picking up is coming from that bogey. So I'm going to clean these wheels extra specially well, because these are actually pretty grubby. And the Class 29 I quite like, so this has done quite a bit of running. And I notice I've got a big splodge of oil on the back of my hand here, so let's clean that off. There we go. I wouldn't recommend spreading IPA onto your skin, by the way, but uh, it's all right. It's, you know, it's not terribly infectious. No, it's not infectious. It's actually used, I think, I mean, don't quote me on this, but I think it's used in the medical profession uh, as sort of an antiseptic. So you can use it to clean wounds or anything, but obviously don't use stuff that you've dipped dirty cotton buds into to clean wounds, because uh, I don't think that will help. But uh, yeah, it's, I don't know if it's antibacterial, but it's definitely antiseptic. So it's quite nice if you cut yourself while you're servicing, you splash a little IPA onto it. Um, you know you're not going to get an infection, which is nice. So I don't actually have to clean these wheels, but again, I just like having locos with clean wheels. Uh, so even though these particular wheels on this side don't do any picking up, it's nice just to clean them. All right. So she's finished, and I believe that is all five locos that I'm doing today. Uh, so all that's left now is to jump down to the track again, and we'll give her a little bit of a test. Uh, obviously, we've had her running on the controller, so I don't think there's going to be a problem here. Bear with me. Okay, sorry, I'm just double-checking that the, the, uh, the sound is still working properly. Okay, let's stick this down onto the track. And it's quite a nice thing, this. I wish Hornby had re-released this in the railroad range, maybe. That would be cool. Right, let's give this a little bit of juice then. Ready? Oops, it sort of leapt forward and then stopped. There we go. Yeah, she looks okay to me. I had to give her a little bit of a nudge. But that's normal once you've... If you've only just put the thing back together, sometimes it does need a nudge. Okay, let's try it at high speed then. Uh, that's quite a decent high speed, and let's get her back into the shot and try a crawl, because we want to know that they'll crawl. Bit nasty, actually. I started that on an express point. But as you can see, that's not a bad crawl for a ring field. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'll tick that off in the book. Let me take this and put that back. Right, so that is the class 29 done. Uh, so that is June 18. I know it's not actually June. I've not gone mad. It's just this is this is my list for June. Full service, there we go. And that's the class 29 done. Okay, so you guys let me know. Do you want me to do some more of this tomorrow? Uh, if you'd watch another couple of hours of this tomorrow, uh, do let me know. Uh, I've got the list here of what I'll be doing tomorrow. And I'll be doing these regardless of whether I actually stream or not, so it doesn't matter to me. Uh, so I will be doing the Scrap 040, and that's the ugly tank engine that uh, was in my Christmas video. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Uh, so that is a fast 040, if you're asking. Uh, then I'll also be doing the N15 Sir Levine, which is a DCC fitted one. I'll be doing a Black 5, uh, the Class 5 as well. Um, that's the Hornby Railroad one. She's also DCC fitted, but I'll be de-chipping her because I'll be, I'll be filming a race between her and... Henry at some point, so I need her to be on DC for that. Uh, then I'll be doing Gadwell, uh, the A4 of course, and then I'll be doing um, the Railroad Schools class. Let's just double check here, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, I'll be doing the Railroad Schools class, a lovely 440. So I'll be doing those tomorrow, that actually shouldn't take me all that much, that shouldn't take me too long uh, to do those five tomorrow. So uh, let me know, do you want me to do those? Let's have a quick chat before I go. Oops, I've gone and dropped the lid. Uh, of course, I've got to go and search for that uh, screw for the Backman A4 that I managed to throw on the floor. But I did find pretty much the same screw to go in there, so if I don't find it, I won't be too upset. Uh, Mandalore the Mad says, yes, please. Okay, more of this will be fine, says Mark. Okay, yes, says Jeff. Steam of Stream Train, yes. Definitely more tomorrow, says Rob's Trains. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I can do some more tomorrow. Uh, I can probably leave all this stream stuff set up then. I've only set up two cameras. Yeah, Sam, uh, Jeff says, do it, Tom. Who on earth is Tom? Tom's Trains. 
Yes, I think it's very interesting and helpful for those that are fixing and cleaning their own models. Uh, any idea when you'll do the Caledonian single, says Thomas Kissel. Uh, I'll have a look, Thomas. I mean, I could make this a regular thing. I mean, I've got on the list for June, I've got 25 models. Uh, I, I don't want to stream all those because it will take it'll take hours but Friday Saturdays I could probably do it uh, right the Caledonian singles you say uh, I'm, I'm gonna do right so the red Caledonian single happened in uh, February let me show you this here are my lists they're out of focus but uh, at least you can see what I'm looking at um, da -da -da -da. not there there is a couple of them there's the blue version uh, I'm looking for Triang. No, it's not in April. Did I do it in May? I did Stevenson's Rocket last month in May, or this month. I did it at the end of last month. Uh, so it wasn't then. Uh, this is July we're looking at now. No, I don't think I've got it in July. Where is that Caledonian? Coronation. Saddle Tank, Lord Westwood, no. If not, I'll go through the actual um, pages and find it and find what date it's got on it. Uh, I might have already even done it. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Nope. I don't know whether I'll put it down as Hornby or Triang, because technically it's Hornby, but we all know it as Triang. Uh, right, okay, let's go through it and find it. Caledonian single. Uh, I did Lord of the Isles not long ago, but that means obviously that she's not going to be, we're not going to be doing her again for another, what, 11 months or whatever it was. A, that's B, Battle of Britain. B, B, that's D for Dox Hunter. Coronation, so it'll be behind Coronation because it's C, A. Okay, Caledonian single. Uh, that is to be done, oh, it says, is it January or June? I think June. So it might even be this month. That will be why I didn't find it. Is it on there? Hmm, it isn't on there. <laughs> Trouble is I, I swap them round every year. Uh, so let's have a look. June, July. Oh, it could be. Right, so basically last year I switched to doing them, servicing them that is every 12 months rather than every six because I just didn't have the time. So I reckon it's in January I did that one. So I won't be doing the Caledonian for a few months, but I could do a video of it if you want. Right, let's pop those back in then. I'll come back to those tomorrow. So yeah, if you want to pop back tomorrow, I'll start at 10 in the morning uh, or thereabouts. I'll schedule it as soon as I've finished this. And uh, if you want to pop in and uh, I don't know if you want it, if you fancy watching some more boring servicing, uh, feel free to drop in. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, thank you everybody uh, for watching. Uh, what's everyone's Snapchat's name, says AG. Laser Jet's there. Hello, Laser, how are you doing? Uh, I'm just about to sign off, actually. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Uh, blimey, an hour and 43 minutes. That's been going for quite a while. Um, Jeff says, uh, hey, sorry for this, but I will repeat my word again. What word's that? Uh, I'm fine, thanks, Laser. I hope you are as well. Okay, folks. Well, thank you very much for watching. I, uh, I don't have any more to do right now. Uh, I'm only going to be doing five because uh, obviously I've got a few days before June starts. So hopefully by the start of June, I'll have done all my servicing for June. Doesn't make a lot of sense, that, but it's the way I like to do it. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you ton uh, no, not tonight, tomorrow night for another video. And uh, hopefully before that, I'll do another servicing stream. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you very soon. Cheers, everybody.